How you going guys? It's Justin Allen here with my Good Advice channel. Here to give you good advice for a better future. Right, today I'm talking about like some pointers on like how to become rich. I've been doing a lot of studying on it. I'd have to say there's like at least a hundred boxes you've got to tick in order to become rich. You've got to realize how you become rich is how you, the average person can become rich. If you're looking for long shots, you know, you're not going to, you know, what's the odds of winning the lotto? It's like six million to one. Like, I'm trying to say how you can become rich, like, for the average person. Because if you're just going to be like that 1% who wins the lotto or has a big inheritance or has some big lucky break or some business that just takes off through the roof, you know, it's not, that's only how a very small percentage, probably 1% of the population become rich. That's not how the average person becomes rich. So you got to really uh, follow these pointers on how you become rich. you got, you got to, I, I believe you got to buy low and sell high. If you, It's one of the key ingredients how businesses work and that's how you become rich. you got to really work out the, do an analysing of the scenario before you you jump into it like a lot of people like it's the same pr principle like even when you're a kid a kid could become rich through through the same principle as like becoming rich for a business or a real estate that like a kid would say they want to make more money they basically could go down to Safeway and, and buy all the ingredients to sell lemonade and say it cost them $15 and then they can sell it a dollar a cup and make you know sell it for a hundred dollars and it's only cost them fifteen dollars so very good profit it's the same scenario of any business you can do an analyze of you know up front what the return is before you jump into it so it's one of the key aspects so I believe what you got to do like you got to really one of the key ingredients is you got to invest into something that gives you a good return and then reinvest into something that gives you an even bigger return. That's simply how a lot of people do become rich because you've got to work up the ladder. You can't be just a big boy straight away. So what I recommend, like first of all, how the average person can become rich is you've got to have a huge desire. You've got to, like me, I have a burning desire to achieve financial freedom. That's my number one priority every, every day I wake up. That's what I think about a lot. That's what I use, like my brain is a computer. That's what I, most of my brain storage would, if you were to download my brain, that's what you'd find. A lot of information relating on that topic. I'm not willing to put information into my brain that's not going to help me, like watching too much TV. I'd rather be reading audiobooks or YouTube, uh, getting information that's going to help me. So that's one of the key aspects. Don't put in information into your brain that's not really going to help you. Help you. So you've got to like ask yourself sometimes: Is this going to help me, or is it not going to help me? With everything you do each day, it's going to help me long term or short term. So, what I recommend doing is like while you're trying to first of all have a job, you got to build up uh, your credit rating and, and a deposit. So your money makes money. So it's how the world works. It's like having the lemonade. You need the fifteen dollars, and, and you need to have a plan and apply all the plan and be in the right location, and then advertise it. And then you can. That's how you do it. It's the same with a lot of businesses too. It's the same. So you basically, once you're in a job for I think about two years, you can use leverage. So leverage, you can go to the bank and just get a business loan or uh, get an investment property. And meanwhile, while you're waiting for that two years, I recommend studying, uh, learning, and don't waste your time, and build up a deposit. And you can even try and find something that has a high return while you're waiting, because money in the bank's not going to give you the most return. And you can always, I don't know, you can do some studying on it could even buy some good shares and then just sell them once you've got enough money together because you can get a higher return or 
there's many things you can do when you open up your mind, you put your brain to work to, to find out answers. Because most people just put their brain to sleep and don't think. But when you put, wake up and you force your brain to work, your brain's there to help you, then you can come up with answers and try and figure it out. And what you can do is once you say got a couple years down the track you could say for example get a, a investment property and then you can say once you got that and then you can work on eventually you can pay down the loan with extra money and you can basically always pull the equity out and, and use that to start up a business so there's multiple options like how to become rich and buy another house eventually and pull the equity out and meanwhile while you're waiting to pay down the loan so, so there's a lot of a lot of strategies to like how to become rich you got you got to you got to study the subject there's, there's so you got to have a lot of faith as well if you if you don't have faith in, into something you know you're just gonna think it's not gonna work and you're just gonna give up too easily so you got to have faith and another thing they say is you need to have specialized knowledge. Every, you know, everybody knows average knowledge, but you've got to know something that's specialized, something that's more technical, something... Because, like, if you were to have an idea or plan of a business or something, you need specialized knowledge. You need... And you also need to do planning. And it's not like, like you've got to plan in the correct order as well. It's like if you're building a house, if you don't do it in the correct stages, it's not going to work. So you've got to realize planning is a big part of it too. And you, I believe you've got to do something that's scalable. Because it's some things are just limited to what they can do. If it can be scaled to a massive amount of people, and then that's how you can become rich. It's like if you had one pizza shop, it's not, not going to make you rich. But if you scaled it to all around the world then you get, can make a little bit of money off each shop or, or free franchising and all you're looking at it like it's like if you were to have a concert if you were just marketing to, to one person you're not going to make any money but if you market it to uh, the whole crowd of it you know a hundred thousand people and you're making a hundred bucks off each person then the, the scalable is going to be much more and you could even do a recording and then scale it off to even more so some things you've got to keep in mind with scalability and I believe one thing is about becoming rich is like potential something that, that will make you rich has to have potential as a key word because you, when you really think about it you can like jump into an analyzing of a lot of things that it's like it's like anything does does the average job in this world say working nine to five <clears throat> have potential to make you rich not really when you really think about it if you were to pull out like, a calculator of what you could save after your cost of living and you still have to exchange your time for money and no matter whether you're a doctor or a laborer you're still exchanging your time you have to get up and go to work to get the money and the best form of income is really passive income when you're putting a lot of work to running in the business or getting the rental property up and running and then after that it sort of runs itself and you can always just hire out the work to other people and you're not really exchanging your time anymore money's coming into your bank account without exchanging your time that i reckon that's the best form of income in this world is passive income so you got you got to keep in mind you know there's so many boxes to tick to become rich i tell you a lot of people just like you can you, I reckon you got to really study a lot of books too it does open up your mind you get someone some you know say 20 years of their life piling into a book that it's all that information can help you greatly and I believe even mentors too get get yourself some mentors on YouTube I, I reckon that really helps motivate you and give you knowledge keeps you on the right track they say the best information is from somebody who's already been there going like where you're trying to go they've already been there so they can tell you that 
the pitfalls and avoid the, the, the things that can cause you a headache. But there's, there's so many more tips like, like you can't really give all the information in one clip. There's, the list goes on and on on how to become rich. I believe you, one of the key aspects how you become rich is to reinvest and reinvest. So like once you've got one rental property then you can reinvest the profits into the next rental property or reinvest into the next business and then you can do something that has even bigger return for your money. It is, and, and like I said before you've got to do something that has potential to make you rich because technically working a normal job doesn't have potential to make you rich but if you can keep your cost of living very low and have as much money left over as possible you'll have a lot of money to invest to, to give a good ROI which is a return on investment so ROI is the, is the key it's like how much time do you have to exchange and how much money do I have to put down and how much profit will I get how much return will I get so it's just basically an analyzing the scenario of what you make so you got to realize like there's a lot of things in this world that have huge potential it's like who, who, who makes more money like when you think about it, like uber or the driver the driver always has to exchange time for the money that the people with uber they just have to really have one person working IT in each uh, state say in Melbourne and, and then they, they can run the whole system and then the ratio of how much you know the, the cost of the running to what they make is just crazy because they don't have to have all the outlay we have to exchange our time for the money they, they don't have to so you've got to realize like there's the big people out there that make the big money and there's the people out there like the drivers or the workers for businesses we're, we're the ones that are always going to be the little people so we've got to really try to put up a fight to get out of the uh, rat race and get out of the system so you basically got to be very frugal with your money and invest and reinvest and reinvest because you can see like if you invest into a, say a business that has potential to, to make you a huge amount of money versus Uber you're never going to be rich for working for a job you know you work it out you can work out say there's a guy in my other job right and he probably he's 50 years old and he, he wants to retire at 60 but if you work out what he's gonna make and how much he can after his cost of living he can probably only save 15 grand so if you, in 10 years time that's only you know, it's not much money when you work it out on the, on the calculator it's 150 grand and by that time you know 10 years 150 grand is not much so he's got to forget that option close the door on that option he's got to do something that has potential to give him a passive income and a higher return that's just a waste of time just working for the next 10 years you could you could get the same result you know at 150 grand through doing something else so if you open up your mind to look at other options and do something that has potential that that's what makes you rich because he, like I suggested to him, he's got a, a million dollar house in Mitcham. So if he sold that house, he could live, live in a cheaper house and buy two rental properties. Plus he's already got another property. So he could have the potential to have, you know, three properties plus live in one. And, and he's got the extra income coming in. And he's technically living in his biggest asset and, he, and he's not getting, like if he retires tomorrow, what's he going to get? He's not going to get much return anyway. It's, you can't, it, you can see like a big part of being rich is really how much money you make without exchanging your time. So you need to, you need to keep that in mind. If you, if you were to retire, it really comes down to how much money is going to be put into your bank while you're not working versus like you'd rather have that than have a million dollar house a lot of people don't realize living in your house is just a liability it's not putting any money into your bank 
and also it's costing you money too because it, that money could have been invested into something that has potential to give you a return and you can always you know invest into something that it has potential to, to be make you rich versus something that's guaranteed not to make you rich so you keep that in mind like a big part of it is also like you got you got to keep that in mind that that is like very true like you got to realize like if you just keep doing what you're doing where is that going to take me so you got to realize you know you can easily work out a scenario sometimes just by working out on a calculator and put aside some time you know five ten minutes and you can work out the scenario of where it's going to take you so keep in mind that, that you can you got to realize that is this going to make me rich is this a waste of my time and then you got to realize that a big part of life is like you want to be rich at a young age money's no good to us when we're old when you're old you're chasing what time you got left and your health money becomes not so important you're really only willing to sell your time to a limited amount because you, a lot of people don't realize like most people just wait till the last moment like and then, then then they rush into things it's like they have to be kicked up the ass to realize that they've made mistakes if they you know it's, it's a bit like a year your life is like a year before you know it's going to be over We've only got a certain amount of time and then it's going to be over so you've got to make the most of that time to tick all the boxes well anyway good luck guys try and achieve financial freedom like me keep studying it keep trying one of my mottos is keep moving keep moving